I don't know if you guys can see me, but okay. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. What's going on? Or maybe he's not coming. Wait, one second. Mm, that's not what I want you to see. <laughs> that's what I want you to see. Boom. Wait, 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 wait. We're nearly getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Are we there? I think we're there. I think we're done it. Fucking hell. What was all that about? What was going on? It's me in the flesh. That don't happen there. Um, hello, though, peeps. Welcome to another episode of Sunday Session Live. What a night of boxing yesterday. <laughs> what a night of boxing. All right, let's do what we normally do. Let's um, let's say hello to a few people in the chat. Um, Fahazan, Riaz, even Ade, what a night last night. That was a punch from the boxing gods. Jordan Gill a week before and now Lee. Yeah, you're right. It's ridiculous. Honestly, ridiculous. The whole thing was just stupid. Uh, Quinn 41 says, Addy, my man, I haven't seen a KO standing then through the ropes in a while. Must be a weird feeling being there. You want to scream and shout, what a comeback, but also concern. The crowd goes silent. Yeah, weird, weird, because I, I don't know what it is, but I just got into the fight, like really into it. And in the end, for some reason, maybe because I was sitting around Lee Wood's people, they're right behind me. So you're kind of like, all right, come on, Lee Wood which isn't fair because I'm a big Michael Condon fan. But when he landed that punch, you're thinking, oh, my God. And then, obviously, the concern is about Michael Condon and his safety and health. So everyone wants to celebrate, but you can't celebrate. It's a weird, weird feeling. And then I kind of run around the side and they are um, trying to put the oxygen mask on him and he's removing it. But as he's removing it, he's almost fainting as well. It's weird. That's why everyone really got concerned when he kind of went in and out. It felt, it looked like he was going in and out of consciousness. But then in the end, went back, went to the hospital, got checked up and he was fine. But yeah, very scary indeed. Uh, Karma Serene says, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Karma, my sister. How are you? Um, hopefully you're doing very, very well, sister. Um, Soldier Boy Health and Fitness Channel. Adi! Evening, loads of you saying evening. Let's just quickly show all those. What's good, Ade? Uh, you got this blackout. Uh, big up, Ade, and the chat says, Rem, oh, G-Man in the building. Salute to Ade. Um, who else is here? Matt, we haven't done one of these for ages. I'm really looking forward to this. Matt77 says, even Ade, one incredible fight and the best and worst of boxing all at once. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, they don't get paid enough for what they do. I mean, they, you know, people... They use the phrase all the time, I'm putting my life on the line. They genuinely are putting their life on the line. I mean, some of the punches that were landing, and when you're when you're there in your ringside, you can hear the punches that Lee Woods landing. It's like, geez, like fudding punches. And when he went down in the first round, you're thinking, geez, man, this is this is crazy. Honestly, it was such a crazy atmosphere. I love the way they separated the Irish fans and the English fans. Because it then created this weird competition between the fans about who can sing the loudest. And it was just, it was incredible. It might, it, I don't think it was as good as Warrington Lara, but that was special. But it was better because it lasted. Obviously, Warrington Lara didn't. Um, but that's probably why I edged Warrington Lara, but not in terms of noise. In terms of noise, I'll still edge it to Warrington's fans, but it's bloody close. The Irish are 
They're a mad bunch, aren't they? They really are. Uh, Will Dogan, even that a good work last night as always. What a fight that was. What a fight, dude. Honestly, incredible. Appreciate that as well about the work because I thought I was shit. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Kyoshi says, hello, Ade. It's great to have you back for another live, especially after such a great night of boxing. People, there's so much to talk about. Obviously, it isn't just, uh, isn't just Lee Wood and Michael Condon, which is obviously I know everyone's going to send messages about that. I mean, Sandy Ryan losing was a bit of an upset. Upset to us, I think if you speak to boxing people, a lot of boxing people thought Erica Farias still had a lot to offer. We've got to talk about Tyson Fury, Dillian White, who's AJ going to fight? I mean, there's fucking hell, this life could go on forever. This life could be the longest life we've ever done. Um, Punch Perfect Boxing, whose channel continues to grow, continues to grow. Great content. Salute, my bro. Well done. Um, Rowan Perry, even Mr. Ola Depot. Um, Who's this one? Uh, Joe Barrow says, even at a and peeps, what an epic night. Thank goodness Michael is okay. Yeah. Thank goodness. Cause um, you don't want it to, it would have spoiled everything, wouldn't it? Cause it was again, such a great night. I expected that there to be fights in the crowd. There wasn't again, maybe cause of segregation. It did get a little heated though. When Michael Condon was getting treated, just because obviously there were some fans that were ringside who obviously were celebrating Lee Wood's win. And there were some fans obviously concerned for Michael Condon. So it got a bit heated there. But apart from that, Special, special night. Um, a lot of you, a lot of you, oh, this is when the mic went. Um, okay, this is when the mic went. <laughs> What's this one? Uh, Mohammed Larousi says, are you going to Fury versus White? Yes, I am going to Fury versus White. I'm not quite sure who with yet. The Zone are looking to do something there and they've asked me about it. And TalkSport are looking to do something there as well. So, I'm not quite sure who with, but I'm I'm 100% going to Fury versus what. If I wasn't, I'd be doing a live watch on because, yeah, that, that's going to be crazy as well. Uh, Usman Mahmoud only gave Lee Wood two rounds going to, going to the 11th. I gave him, I think I gave him four, maybe three actually. But yeah, look, Michael Conlon was excellent. He was so good. It, that, I've been quite critical of Michael Conlon because I, I, I wasn't sure about him. But yesterday... <laughs> He showed me he was a superstar. Like, he's got everything in it. He talked so well. His entrance was incredible. And he started so fast. Like A lot of this was about puncher versus boxer. And obviously the boxer being Michael Conlon, the puncher being Lee Wood. When he started landing that left hand, he showed that he's a puncher as well. He really is. He's got a bit of spite about him. He just got he just got um, into a war which he didn't really need to get into. He was getting tired as well. Um, but look, he'll be back. He'll, he'll win a world title. He really will because he's a special, special talent. Uh, what is he now, 30? So he's got to get a move on. He's not young, but special talent. Uh, Rooney AMUFC says, yo, Ade, hopefully you had a good holiday in Nigeria. Yeah, honestly, the best, what was it, five, six days I've had for a long, long time. Really needed it. Batteries are now fully charged and, and we go again. Um, got a lot of stuff coming up in the next couple of months, so so needed it. Um, uh, Jake Jansen says, more excited for this than Peaky Blinders later. I uh, missed you, man. Peaky Blind, is it back here? I didn't even know the new series was back. I stopped watching it after a couple, if I'm honest with you. Uh, 786 Nav says, Ade, I watched one of the great, the greatest fights ever this week, and it had everything, skill, heart, passion, and most of all the drama. Congratulations to Mark Leach and winning the British title. I didn't even know that was going on. Can't lie to you. I didn't even know that was going on. Um, What's this one? Big Bundit says, one of the most sickening defeats ever. If I was Wood, I would avoid the rematch at all costs. Think Conlon is the better fighter. Conlon is the better fighter, but Wood knows now that he can dig deep. Wood know, And look, it's funny hearing Carl Froch on comms yesterday talking about it. Like, you don't know you can do that unless you do that. Because you're, you're never ever going to push yourself in sparring like that, are you? Do you know what I mean? So you don't know you're capable of doing what Lee Wood did until you do it. And now this is twice that Lee Wood's done it. It's twice Lee Wood's gone back-to-back -back fights against top-level opponents and stopped them in the 12th round. So that shows that Lee Wood is dangerous from literally round one to 12. So although, although I can understand what you're saying about Michael Condon being favorite if they, they fight, Lee Wood knows he can sleep Michael Condon now. And Michael Condon knows it as well. So it's a completely different fight next time around. It really is. Um, I don't think I don't think Lee should avoid it because he's scared of Michael Condon. I think Lee should avoid it because there's Navarati out there. There's Mark McSayo. There's the winner of Josh Warrington, Kiko Martinez. There's big fights out there from now. Big fights. I mean, him versus Josh Warrington is Ellen Road or the City Ground. You're talking 50, 60,000 potentially. So those are the kind of fights you should do. But look, 
that Michael Conlon fight will be on the table. If I'm Michael Conlon, though, it's not the immediate rematch. You go, um, have a couple, and then you, you try and campaign for it. Not yet. Not at all. I wouldn't anyway. All right, guys, you know how it works. When the Super Chats come in, I'll read those first, just out of respect to the people that have sent them in, and then we'll go back to the questions again. Uh, Super Chat here from G-Man Boxing says, I think Conlon made a mistake going all out in round two, left little for the later rounds. How was Nigeria, bro? Good point. He did. He went all out. But I, I can understand why he went all out in round two. It wasn't an empty a tank all out of sort, but Lee Wood was badly hurt, badly. And obviously you guys would remember when um, Kid Galahad got hurt against Kiko and Kiko went straight after him like, fuck, he's done. I've got to go for it. And Lee Wood was done. So I can understand why he went for it. Sometimes it's fine margins. It's fine. He was a couple of left hooks away from getting rid of Lee Wood in round two. A couple of left hooks. So sometimes you've got to do it. Um, but I, I would say it's more credit to Lee Wood and his survival instincts and his fitness and his gas tank to survive between rounds one and four. Um, as for how Nigeria was, Nigeria was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Um, I haven't been there for nearly four years. So it was nice to go back and have a little break. And yeah, man, we'll try and go back a lot more, actually. Um, super chat here from Phil. Appreciate the super chat, Phil. Thank you, brother. It says, hey, Ade, cheers for bigging up the Forest fans in your earlier video. You're a top man. Mate, mate. If anyone was there, they'll understand what I'm saying. So Michael Conlon came out first. In fact, it started before that. It started... Because, you know, like, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, like, not many people were there for the Gary Cully. There's a few. I say not many people, but it was about 40% full when Gary Cully fought Miguel Vasquez and Sandy Ryan had her fight. So when Keevan, Keevan Ajarko walked out, it, it was a bit more busier. Um, but he's fighting Juan Carlos Rubio. So it's not like the Forest fans are going to boo Keevan Ajarko. But then the, the Irish started making noise for Keevan. And then the Forest fans started making noise. I was like, bloody hell, here we go. When Michael Conlon walked out, that place fucking erupted. And I was like, oh, shit. Lee Wood, you know, he's going to feel quite funny here because he's going to walk out and he's going to get booed. And he did get booed. But then it was almost like they were robots. The Forest fans all just rose together and started singing. And I was like, that's all I could do. I was ringside. That's all I was doing. I was like, this is incredible. They were literally going at each other like this was a fucking singing competition. I was like, this is just remarkable. It's like the Forest fans are like, you Irish ain't coming to the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham and outdoing us like that. No sorry. It was the greatest thing ever. Honestly, greatest thing. I loved it. I really did. Um, all right, let's get back to uh, the comments that are coming in. Uh, Ortega Ortega says uh, Lee putting knots on the map again truly a magnif magnificent fight uh, that was a cracker for the fans it really was honestly obviously look they haven't had much to celebrate when it comes to boxing in Nottingham since Carl Froch and obviously he was just incredible and he had some amazing nights at the motor point you think of um, uh, Lucian Butte, Yusuf Mack but what what Lee Wood done yesterday well, I thought was better than all of that and I thought Carl Froch versus Lucian Butte wouldn't be able to be beaten but what Lee Wood done, because of A, who was fighting, and look, Lucian Boot is a credit as well, but A, who was fighting, the way in which he was hurt, he was severely hurt, you know, in that fight. And for him to finish it that way as well, to literally knock him out cold to the point where he goes through the ropes. And, you know, I actually felt sorry for Lee a bit as well, because you really want to celebrate that win. That's the kind of win where you want to celebrate where Eddie runs into the fucking ring and lifts you up and the place goes crazy. But he had to just, like, be calm. And I was like, he missed these... Look, he'll go back and he'll watch it and he'll smile, but he missed that moment to really go crazy, didn't he? But look, the health and safety of Michael Condon was more important than ever. Way more important. Um, uh, what's this one? MC said, good evening. We're glad to have a Sunday off work, so I'm spending it uh, DIY, DIY and listening to you. My man. My man. Um, Polo says, it looked like he fainted. I thought that, but then I've watched so many different angles of it now as well. People were ringside taking videos of it and you see he does land a good punch to the temple and that's what just puts his lights out. It's almost as though he turned a switch off and that was it. But obviously he was tired as well, exhausted, exhausted, but he got caught. He got caught and it was a great shot as well. Uh, I'm just going to quickly read this one. Uh, base the kid, the hardcore casual in the building. Appreciate it, Base. Thank you so much, my brother. I said, looking good yesterday, Ade. Thanks, man. That was Yesterday was a couple of hard interviews. Terry Harper was a bit difficult because she was emotional. She was crying in the ring. 
I wasn't really allowed to push on Lee because he wanted he didn't really want to do the interview because obviously what happened so it was a bit difficult, but we got it done in the end. Uh, Pulisic's personal doctor, uh, Super Chat, says, any Irish prospect I've seen fight uh, lately are all counterpunchers who are comfortable off the ropes. Just seems to be our style lately. Invites pressure. Yeah, uh, maybe it does. But it also makes it bloody exciting. It really does. That, that was just a battle of two styles. And it was almost a, a case of two halves as well, fights of two halves, where Michael Conlon is a counter-puncher and he's just too fast, too good. And at stages, it looked like it was getting a bit embarrassing for Lee Wood. But then Lee Wood, the bigger, the stronger guy, I'm going to walk you down and take a few. Very reminiscent of like a like a Margarito style or a Marcus Maidana where, okay, you're going to land one, but can you, can you keep up with this pressure and this work rate? And in the end, there's only a minute 30 left on the clock. He couldn't. And sometimes it is a battle. Like, like if Michael Conlon stays on his feet, he wins the fight. So yeah, he would have you know taken a bit of punishment, but he wins the fight. It's just a case of Lee Wood's will was like, mm -mm, not in my backyard, not in my backyard. Another super chat here from Sammy Pavely says, "Hi, Adam, amazing work yesterday. He seemed like a natural interviewing. Um, what a fight! So happy for Lee. The man has all the heart, deserves it all. It's funny you say like a natural interview because my heart is fucking going through the roof." <laughs> I, I yeah, it's it's a bit weird. It's weird. Um, but yeah, no, look, it was a fantastic night, man. It really was. Um, it was an incredible night, actually. Incredible night. And it's funny because, look, there were some fights on it that weren't great. Like Miguel Vasquez was awful, wasn't he? He was awful. Terry Harper's fight wasn't too great either. But then when you get a main event like that, it makes up for everything. And you know, the, the zone are quite lucky. They've had a couple of good ones recently. Even Jordan Gill who's Lee Wood's friend, he had that one against uh, Kareem Guerfi where he was getting destroyed and then bang. Like, boxing is just... What a sport, man. What a bloody sport. Right, where are we? Um, I want to make sure that I don't miss any. Any of them. Um, where are we? What's this one? Sai H, good evening at Karma Serene. Always a pleasure to have your company. Oh, hello. This is turning into um, Ade's um, date insight, isn't it? <laughs> Ade, the G and go. I wish, but thank you very much, sweet science report. What's this one from Ebenezer Good? What was the vibe in the crowd at the end last night? Irish on Twitter sensed, seemed a bit bitter, doing their best to discredit the KO, saying he passed out to fatigue, not a KO. Um, I understand why they said that, but yeah, they were wrong. They were wrong. It, it clearly was a KO. He clearly got clipped. Um, vibe was good. Vibe was good. Again, it helped because they segregated the fans. I mean, again, normally when you go to boxing matches, all fans sit with each other and that can get a bit heated. But I think because they had fans completely on opposite sides of the arena, there was I didn't see any fights. And trust me, I was looking for them. I was scouting. There's a couple of drunk idiots, as you're always going to get everywhere. But in terms of just the, the energy, fine. Um, I had to close the show and do a bit from the zone, so I didn't leave the arena straight after. I'm guessing... There would have been some incidents straight after, but again, to be expected. Um, you know, you know, caused a bit of a problem. And I think I said this earlier because Michael Conlon, um, because Lee Wood won, obviously people around the ring celebrating, but then people, there was Irish around the ring as well. And they weren't happy about people celebrating while Michael Conlon's lying down. So that was the only bit, but apart from that, fantastic, nothing at all. Uh, J star eight, five, seven, five Smith said the zone have delivered two amazing fights so far. The Jordan Gill, uh, and now the Lee Wood, Michael Conlon. I'm looking forward to Josh Warrington, Kiko Martin. That's going to be a good one, you know. I'm telling you, that's going to be a good one. Do not sleep on that one at all because Josh, we don't know what Josh has got left. Like, we don't know if that Lara fight affected him mentally, physically. We have no idea. And we saw that Kiko still got something left. I mean, you beat Kid Galahad. Let's put some respect on his name. So, yeah, I think that's going to be another good one. Another crazy atmosphere. It's going to be mental. March 26th. Um, we're going up there a couple of days earlier to do a few DAZN boxing shows up there. So looking forward to that one as well. That should be good. Hey, a bit question on Sandy Ryan. Sandy Ryan, why is she fighting a two-weight world champion in her full fight is beyond me? Yeah, you know, it is. It's weird with boxing. There isn't any um, middle ground. It's either, look, they didn't want to keep giving her prospects. They thought they'll give her someone that, to be honest, um, Erica Farris is coming to the end. She's 37. She's lost her last three fights. I know it's a good opposition, but she's lost her last three. So maybe it was a case of they're trying to rush Sandy because they thought there's something there. Um, I know they're desperate to do the Sandy Ryan Chantel Cameron fight. Chantel Cameron's obviously got Callie Reese. So I, I, you take the risk sometimes. You take the risk. 
And there were times when I thought she hurt Erica Farris to the body, but she just didn't. It wasn't enough from Sandy. Um, she'll, she's going to be disappointed, but at least she can say she lost to a two-time former world champion. So that's the only saving grace for her, that she didn't lose to a scrub. Now they just got to build her back up. I, I do wonder, she came in heavy. She came in at 144 pounds on the way in. So she must have walked into the ring. 154, 155, too heavy. Too heavy. I thought her feet looked a bit slow yesterday. And I think maybe it's about just making sure you're coming at 140 next time. I know they agreed a 142 catch weight, but coming at 140 uh, and be as light on your feet as possible because she looked a bit ploddy uh, in the final couple of rounds. Uh, GT says, much love to the success story, Eddie. Appreciate that, man. Really do. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Conlon versus the loser of Warrington versus Kiko as a comeback fight. Uh, Defo bounced back from this. I, I wouldn't be shocked if... If he fights a Kiko, my everyone fights a Kiko Martinez, don't they? But no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if this is the right weight for him. Remember, he has fought at Super Bantam as well. He's had quite a few fights at Super Bantam. So I don't know. I mean, in the end, like Lee Wood just overpowered him, didn't he? Just kind of every time he got him to the road, it was just like boom, boom. So not quite sure. Not quite sure what next for Condon. What I do know is rest. Like rest, rest, rest. The body and the head and the way in which he dropped, it's not supposed to happen like that. So I don't want to see him until autumn. So September, October, I think a long, long rest. It would have been a long camp. And then maybe even the same for Lee Wood, a long, long rest. I mean, the punches Lee Wood took to the head, like Conlon's left hand couldn't, it, it, like he found a home for it all night. So even Lee Wood needs a long time out of the ring. He really does. Uh, John Cahill says, was, was on the edge of my seat the moment Conlon landed in round one. What a fight. Honestly, what a fight. No one was sitting down. No one. It fantastic. It's funny because security for some reason always like sit down, sit down. I'm like, well, fuck. What, what, what is this? We ain't watching table tennis. This isn't fucking snooker. What do you mean sit down? Everyone's trying to go mad, and you're like, oh, sit, sit down. And I was like, stand the fuck up. Pay my money. I'm stand. Well, not me, but if I'm the fans, pay my money. I want to bloody stand up and watch this. Um. Uh, Rem says we have the best boxing fans in the world, hand down, easily, easily. Like easily. And yesterday was the best of both in it. You had the English and you had the Irish come together. Um, obviously, look, the Mexicans are fantastic as well. But I mean, look, every time an American boxer or anyone comes over, they say it all the time. Look, Terence Crawford said it, didn't he? Like, oh, the English fans are incredible. They are. I think Chris Mannix, who works for the zone, he tweeted out something along the lines as well. Like, this is incredible. Like the way in which we get behind the fighters is, is mental. There's that relationship with football and boxing. And I don't think America have that same relationship between maybe American football and boxing or basketball and boxing. It's either like you like that sport or that sport or that sport, where many football fans like boxing. So you get the football fans going to boxing matches and that's what creates the atmosphere. It's incredible. Uh, Leo Max says, who next for Wood? Um, he's got options. He's got so, look, could do the rematch. The rematch at the city ground will, will fill that place out. You wait for the winner of Josh Warrington, Kiko Martinez. You see what's going on with Leo Santa Cruz, who is the, the champion at that weight division, who's not fought for three years in the division. He says he can come back down to featherweight. Mark Maxayo beat Gary Russell Jr. recently. You got that as an option. Incredible amount of options. Or you could just have, you know, one easy fight. He's had two tough fights. You could have a, a bit of a gimme fight next. You could do that. And then, you know, you wait. But I think he's going to go big, big, big. He's 33 now. And I think his next fight will be at the city ground. That's what Eddie Hearn said next. So, they're going to hope to see if they can get someone over. And um, I think, you know, I think they've got enough money to do so. Um, uh, Fahazan Ria says, Lee Wood will target the winner of Warrington Kiko. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, yo, Ade, who are you interviewing next? You should interview Johnny Nelson. Good shout. I like that one, Johnny Nelson. We've got a couple of people that we're going to do that we've got in the pipeline next. Anyway, we've got Craig Richards. See, big news coming up for Craig Richards. He... We'll soon pop by. We've got Laura Woods that's going to pop by. Obviously, we've got the likes of Tony Bellew. So I'm working on a few. Chisora, just working on a few. We're going to try and do one uh, this week. Um, Happy Wednesday. said, Addy, you weren't shit at all, mate. You did great on the broadcast. Oh, thank you, because I didn't think I was good, but thank you. Um, Sire H says, Addy, did you see Ellaby saying the tank fight is going to be the fight of the year in USA? Bit of a silly comment when Canelo fights the same month. Uh, yeah, he's fighting that um, Ronnie Romero. Is it Ronnie Romero? Is that his name? Um, the fight that was scheduled earlier this year. Sorry, already 
back end of last year. Um, could be could be a good fight. Could be a good fight. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think Canelo Bivol might might edge that. I think I think Bivol's really gonna put in a good performance. I do. Uh, Usman Mahmoud, best fight I've witnessed live. It's, it's such a great fight. And I know there's always that knee jerk reaction, right, where we only remember what was most recent in our memory. But yeah, it was fucking incredible. <laughs> it really was absolutely fucking incredible. Uh, the return of Matt Level says, even though they just finished my day, Joshua needs to fight Wilder and push his wig back. <laughs> um, it's going to be interesting to see what Joshua does. Um, I personally think it's going to be Otto Volin or Luis Ortiz. In fact, I, I would I would put good money on it being Otto Volin. Southpaw, a no-name over here, and it kind of falls under that interim tag type style of fight. So I wouldn't be shocked if it's that. All the other fights are dreams. Like, Joe Joyce is a dream. Deontay Wilder was a dream. Deontay Wilder versus AJ is no interim fight. It's a super fight. A super fight that will do crazy numbers. Abs two former world champions wanting glory back. It will do crazy numbers. Um, but I, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll put a lot of money in it being Otto Volin. I'm not saying that's what I know, because I don't. But I can see how Otto Volin makes sense for what they're trying to do. Um, Deontay Wilder could ice AJ in a round. Otto Volin's good, but he ain't icing no AJ. Uh, Ian Hamilton says, even that it's been a while. Yes, I'm here all evening. What a fight last night. We'll show it to others. Incredible. Honestly, incredible people. Uh, Lee Wood, uh, gracious in victory, says Uzma Mahmoud. Very gracious. So we went back to the hotel. And it's so weird when you see these fighters have these type of wars and um, they're in the hotel having a pint or a drink or just chilling. So yesterday, everyone goes back. We go back to, um, where did we stay yesterday? Was it the Hilton? I can't remember. Yeah, Crown Plaza. So we go, everyone goes back to the Crown Plaza. And you're just seeing, like, you're seeing Kiva Najaka walk in. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, he's okay. He's not injured. But then you're seeing Lee Wood walk in. I'm like, fuck, what are you doing here? He's like, I just want to come down and say hello to people. I was like, blood, how are you not in bed, like, with ice packs on your face? These fighters are built differently. It was crazy to see, honestly. Absolutely crazy to see. All right, a couple of super chats have come in. Let's have a quick read of those. Uh, Big Matthews super chat. Appreciate that man says Fury White pay per view prediction. US and UK new record. Um, could it break AJ Klitschko? I, again, you know what it is. I think there's an appetite for boxing right now over here that's bigger than that's bigger than I can remember. It's it's quite huge now. Just seeing all these events and th there's so much boxing going on. So it could. It could they, look. They think it's going to do two million pay per view buys. Who knows? As we still we still don't know the price point. Is it going to be nineteen ninety five, which I think AJ Klitschko was? Is it going to be twenty five? So it might make more revenue if it's twenty five, but it might not do the same amount of pay per view buys for the US. I don't think it's going to do great at all. Hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. I don't think it'll do great at all, but I think it could do crazy numbers here, and I guess that's what counts, right? Uh, Super chat from Kyoshi. Appreciate it. it says. How much of a chance are you giving uh, Michael Mickinson interesting against Virgil Ortiz next week? I think Mickinson could actually cause Ortiz some problems. So do I. I think you're causing problems. Um, Mickinson's a very good mover. Good mover, tricky, but Virgil Ortiz will get to him. He will get to him. And when he gets to him, with the kind of power that he has and those mean intentions when he throws his punches, it could be a difficult night for Mickinson. But you've got to give him a... You got to give him a chance, just a very, very slim one. Look, he's an unbeaten fighter, and he's going to go over there full of confidence. He's going to make some good money, and he could pull off one of the biggest upsets we've seen in a long time. But I don't think he'll do it. I really don't think he'll do it. Uh, Quinn Forty One Super Chat, appreciate it, brother. Says a random question. I think although MMA gloves are fair or a fair bit smaller, they're more padded. I'm sure I've seen more serious KOs in boxing than in UFC. No, they're not. You know. I've um I've I've actually worn uh, if you're talking MMA the UFC glove I've worn a UFC glove before, and there ain't much padding in that fucker I tell you now, there ain't much padding at all. Um, boxing has a lot more padding than their gloves. Uh, there's different styles of padding as well. I mean you get horse hair, you get like a reflex foam, but um, now nah, the pad there's there's nothing in those MMA gloves, nothing at all, especially at that point as well. So that bit there where the, there's not much at all. There's a bit here, but not much here. I mean, you're cracking someone. You're cracking them with those gloves. You really are. Uh, Punch Perfect Boxing Super Chat says, Conlon rematch might be the most feasible fight outside of the Kiko Josh winner. 
Uh, Maxayo Vargas done for July. Very true. Navarati looking at 1.30. Showtime schedule coming soon. And Santa Cruz is a part of it. Yes, look, that's good. Very good point. And look, I fucking punch perfect. I told you to subscribe to his channel. This guy knows a lot. Um, Kiko Josh is the one, isn't it? But I have a feeling, I have a feeling that the Navarati one can be done. And the only reason I think it can be done is because of that. I think it can be done because of that. Um, did we know that the amount of money the are going to chuck at things? And I think getting Navarati, the only problem, yeah, with getting Navarati over here is I don't think the casual boxing fans, and look, in order to fill the city ground, you need the casual boxing fans interested. I don't think the casual boxing fans know who he is. I really don't. I don't think they know who he is. So <laughs> the more feasible one probably is, as you say, the Kiko Josh winner. I, I look I wouldn't be shocked because it all comes down to money now. I wouldn't be shocked if they do the Condon rematch. It was it was a good fight. Condon was winning it. I wouldn't be shocked if they do it. But from a boxing standpoint, if I'm Lee Wood, I want Navarati. I just don't think Navarati can fill the city ground with Lee Wood. I don't think so. I just don't think people know who he is. Although we were talking about the best featherweight on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. I just don't know if people know who he is enough. But some good points there, brother, as always. All right, let's get back to where we were. Um, sorry, guys, gonna just see where we were again. What's this? Uh, TVGC MMA says, what What you think of Condon saying, okay, boxing social, that corner told him he needed to win the last round and him actually needing to for it, for not, <clears throat> let me read this properly because dude, dude, Come on, let's 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 write it correctly, all right? What do you think of Conlon saying, oh, on, I think that means on Boxing Social, that Corner told him he needed to win the last round and him actually needing to for it not for it not to be, I think you're saying, the majority draw. I think, look, it's difficult. You know what it is about that? We all know, we all know what's going on with judges and scoring, right? And the fact that they gave round 11 and knocked down when it might have been a slip. I think they thought, okay, look, we don't want to get shafted here because they are the away fighter. As much as I think we forget that sometimes he's a top ranked fighter. You know, as much as the Irish were well, half and half in there with the English fans, he's, he's an away fighter. And, you know, you've got to maybe, you've got to sometimes win these rounds convincingly as the away fighter to get the results. So maybe, you know, maybe they did make a mistake saying he needed to win the last round and that's why he kind of squared up and really started swinging for the fences when he should have been on his bike. But no one knew those judges' scorecards at that point, did they? You just don't know. Maybe that's why some people want, want open scoring nowadays. I don't know. What's this one? Ade, just because you have had Connor in the studio, do not defend the fight against Van Heerden. No one can defend this fight. I don't care. It's fucking atrocious, absolute bollocks. A step back from Algeria. I don't know if it's a step back from Algeria. I mean, what's Algeria done in the last three, four years? I don't know if it's a step back. And it's not even a case of me having Connor in because I, when I told, when I mentioned that I had Connor in, I told you what Connor wanted to do. I said, Connor, I actually, you might, you might not have watched the video. I said, Connor's not going to be happy with Van Heerden. So I'm not defending it at all. I mean, Connor was here and Connor was saying out he wants Morris Hooker. Connor was mentioning names like Danny Garcia. And obviously, I know they wanted the Kell Brook. It's not Connor's fault. And look, all I'm saying with regards to the heat is if you want to give heat to someone, give heat to the matchmakers and the managers. I just saw that Connor got heat on his social media. And I'm like, why is Connor getting heat? He doesn't make these fights. Connor would fight anyone. I think we guys know that. Um, not saying he would beat anyone. I'm saying he'll fight anyone. And trust me, he doesn't want to fight a Van Heerden. He knows it. He's a boxing fan as well. He knows the stick he's going to get. But look, let him just, and look, it's funny, we, are, we always say this shit, yeah? Let me tell you something very quickly. And I'm not trying to say this is going to play out like it's going to play out. I remember when Kid Galahad fought Kiko Martinez, and I remember the fucking stick that got, it got destroyed. And I was trying to defend it online, and I got destroyed. What happened? I, will that happen with Connor? I don't think so, but sometimes, man, sometimes I think, fight, you know, you, you'll be shocked. All it takes, and we've seen this now, guys, all it takes is one. That's all it takes. Um, what we got here? What's this one? Uh, Victor Badass says, Adi Ladipa, what has Joyce and Wilder done to warrant an AJ fight? 
Wilder just Wilder just fought Fury, he's former world champion. Um, AJ should fight someone like Caballel. All right, let me ask you, like, you know, let me, let me now, Victor, you better respond to this. What has Joyce and Wilder done? What's Caballel done? What has Agate Caballel done to deserve that? Answers on a postcard, please. Fury always has easy fights. Now it's AJ's turn. AJ has fought killer after killer for nine years. I don't know about killer after killer. I wouldn't say Kubat Pulev was a killer. And then, <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not having Eric Molina as a killer. Come on, man. Come on, let's let's I'm not having Dominic Brazil as a killer. <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even having Andy Ruiz as a killer. These are not killers. These are good fighters. I'm not having these as killers. Stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't do that. Don't do that. Can't do that. You can't do that, sir. Um, ben Odom, super chat. Big one as well. Appreciate Look, appreciate everyone's super chats that come in. Appreciate it, Ben. Thank you so much. Great fight last night, Ade. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you too, Ben. Um, no question. Ben just drops money. He never leaves a question. <laughs> I find it fascinating. Um, Finbar White. Um, even that day, hope you're well. It was an amazing fight in some ways. What boxer needed after the past few weeks? Would a rematch be good? AJ versus Ruiz Free would be good. Um, a rematch would be good. Like a rematch would sell out again. And again, they would move it from the motor point. Although there's something about the arenas where the noise just sort of stays within the arena. Obviously a stadium, it just travels out. But um, look, a rematch would be good. Look, if I'm Lee Wood right now, you take some time out, you speak to your manager. I don't know who his manager is. And you just, you know, look at all the options. And right now at 33 years of age, it's about, you know, legacy fights, but also big money. So you've got to look at the option. And I guess, I guess the one that does tick all those boxes, really, it's Leo Santa Cruz ticks all the boxes because it's a fight in America. And who doesn't want to fight under the lights in Vegas or wherever? But I guess... If Josh wins the IBF title, then that's a legacy fight because you, you know you, you'll be you're unifying in division, and it'll be big money as well. So he's going to be praying that Josh might be the winner of that one. I think. Um, all right, let's get back to the top. What have we got? Um, Miles a feeling says you'd imagine that Wood will try and swerve the rematch. No, he won't. No, he won't. He won't. I mean, look, there's a lot to work on because, you know, there are times where he was getting destroyed in that fight. But why would you swerve the rematch when you knock the guy out? You don't swerve the rematch in that. You knocked him out. It's not like you got beat. You know, you knocked him out. You know, you took his hardest punches. He couldn't take yours. You know, you're not swerving that. Uh, Bayfor Awusu says, you should, inter you should interview Dean White. I don't think these, my chair's I don't think Dean White could fit on that chair. I saw him yesterday. It's funny because <laughs> he went in to um, the area, the, the main air, seating area in front of the ring. And he's so much bigger than every security guard. He he is an incredibly big man. So, yeah, I don't think I, I'd have to kind of, I'd have to reinforce them. And um, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Um. Uh, Puka uh, P1E5 says, as good as Conlon was, he showed he lacked the killer instinct and missed the boat by not finishing Wood off in the second. Wood showed the heart of a lion and that he carries power to the later rounds. You know what? I'm not sure about that, Puka P1E5. I don't think you can say someone lacked killer instinct and someone showed heart of a lion. Um, I almost feel like he had killer instinct, but Lee Wood showed heart of a lion. Like that That's all it is for me. And, and not only that, but... He was so close. Like, he was so close to getting Lee Wood out of there so many times. And I think we've got to give credit to Lee rather than take credit away from Michael Conlon or start to maybe dig out Michael Conlon. I thought Conlon boxed well. I just thought he looked a bit tired towards the latter rounds. He gave a lot up in the first seven or eight rounds where he was landing several shots, always moving, always dodging and weaving. And his gas tank started to empty. And it's funny because um, Carl on commentary, Carl was like, look, as good as Michael Conlon is, he's human. And he's going to start feeling this. Carl, by the way, I thought Carl Foch was fantastic yesterday in the studio and uh, on commentary. And I think DAZN should look at maybe trying to do something there more permanently. Um, but yeah, Carl was like, look, he's human. 
is that gas tank is going to run empty soon. It has to run empty, and it did. And you know there are no reserves. When the gas tank's gone, it's gone. That's it. And unfortunately for for Michael Conlon, he done so much work in rounds one to nine. There was nothing left in the championship rounds. Nothing. Uh, Kwame um, Boadu says, "Why didn't the zone?" show the wood knockout in slow motion. You don't want to show that. I think the zone was scared to because they didn't know the situation with Michael Conlon. And you've got to be very, very careful of showing that when someone's in a situation where we didn't know what was going on. I'm telling you now, people were very, very worried ringside. People had no idea. Literally, everyone was just told to go quiet and move away and shush and don't take out your camera phones, all that, because no one knew what was going on. It was crazy. Uh, G Van says, evening from Swansea, Addy. Uh, caught me out starting early tonight. You need something on the wall over your left shoulder, mate. Looking better than your, your bonds. Yeah, you say, I do need something there. Well, I had wanted to get, um, he's talking about there, right? I was wanting to get, um, a, what are they called again? I can't a logo there. But I don't know, man. I'm not sure. Uh, Stuart E. Daz, they says both gave the all, both gave all they had. Uh, there'd be the trilogy in 2025. I don't know. Remember, remember, thing is old, you know. And Lee was 33. 33, man. It's very, very old. Uh, Reese Cooper, even that a, a quality night of boxing last night. Thought you did great with the interviews as well. Thank you, Reese. Um, um, Rockstar 1996, you swear more on your lives lately. Are you making up for it because you can't on the zone? Do I swear a lot? Fuck it now, I'm joking. Um, Brad Nuttall caught cold boxing says, Addy, I saw you last night. Um, I saw you last night. You had the Sandy Ryan close on Twitter. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, Addy, I saw you last night say you had the Sandy Ryan close on Twitter. Have you managed to watch the fight back? That was never close. Um, It is difficult when you're, when you're there. But yeah, in watching it back, um, it wasn't as close as I thought it was. Sandy Ryan had good spots in the fight, but Erica Farris overall, I think, won the rounds. So yeah, you, you are correct. Uh, Leo Mack one says, "Imagine the Irish. Imagine the Irish that they get that they got a big fight over in Ireland. The atmosphere would be unreal. It'd be, incre it'd be incredible. Because when Michael Conlon came out yesterday, it was incredible. It really was. I guess very reminiscent. Again, there's not been many fighters that have that kind of following." Obviously, Ricky Hatton's won. Um, AJ's following's different. It's not like that. Um, who else has that? Obviously, Josh Warrington has it. There aren't that many. There aren't that many that have it at all. Uh, Mr. S says, when boxing is good, what a sport. When we get the usual trash, boxing needs to fix up. Yeah, look, as much as we complain about um, boxing, and it does give us a lot of shit. It's given us a lot of good recently. Last year was fantastic. This year, I think... Look, we're getting... We're getting bloody Fury versus White, April 23rd. That's happening. The next two, three months for boxing, the schedule, fingers crossed, no one gets injured. It's fucking amazing. There you go, I swore again. Um, Victor Bader says, Joyce can't keep mentioning AJ's name. Yes, you can. If you're Joe Joyce, you want that fight. If you're Joe Joyce, that keep men if I'm Joe Joyce's manager, keep doing it. Keep digging, keep digging. Literally force AJ to fight me. That's what, if I'm Joe Joyce, I mean, Joe's not done anything really since the buddy Daniel Dubois fight. He's got to do something. And, um, sorry, um, the Carlos Tackham fight. Keep mentioning his name. Why wouldn't you? It's, it's a million, you know, million pound minimum you're going to get for fighting AJ. Minimum. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, Star Fox, WR45E. All these weird names. Can't you just, can't you guys just have your real name? Uh, does Ben Davison deserve any credit for this win, considering it was Wood's willpower that won the fight, essentially? I do think all, all the, the training and um, all the, the fantastic corner work is good, but sometimes it is literally just a fighter's sheer will that will take over. It's the sheer will of a fighter. You can have all the best information in that corner as you want, but it's the fighter that has to one like, it's the fighter that has to dig deep. And... <laughs> You're going to give Ben credit. You've got to give him some credit, but that that's all down to one man and one man only, Lee Wood, and those fans. Lee Wood and those fans. That's that's what that's down to. Um, Super Chat here from Ian Hamilton says, Evening, bro. I grinned 
seeing you on last night. Uh, what a fight. Next week, Hamilton versus Verstappen part two. Here we go. Oh, yeah, F1 starts. Jeez, that's quick. Feels like it's quick. Yeah, you know, I grin when I see myself on it. When I watch it back, I kind of laugh as well. See, trust me when I say you're not the only one. I, I, I find it all very funny. Um, a couple other super chats have come in. Let me quickly read them when we get back to the normal questions. Um, hi, Addy, smashing it as always. Uh, Jamie said, hurry up and get back on his channel. Uh, what did you think to um, Ajaka last night? He seems overhyped. Uh, Jamie, by the way, is Punch Perfect. We are going to do that. I've just been super busy and, and just tired, but we'll get, we'll get onto Punch Perfect's channel. Um, Ajaka is an interesting one because I was sitting with someone uh, bear in mind, he fought a guy called Juan Carlos Rubio last night. He's not, not the greatest. Um, lost his lost last time out, got knocked out last time out. 154 pounds, so maybe that was a reason as well. Was up at 160 this fight. Kevin Ajarko looks so powerful, but he landed, I think, I haven't seen the punch stats, about, I'm going to guess and say about 60, 60 hard right hands. And he couldn't get him out of there. And I was thinking, does he not have the punch? Because he looks like he's got the punch. But if, I, I was wondering if he's got it. Um, in terms of being overhyped, I don't think anyone is overhyping him. I don't think so. Um, I think he is where he is, and that's at a decent level. I think the problem that he has right now is that he's fighting for one of those WBA international belts. So we don't know where he is. I don't know if he's British level yet, European level. I, I have no idea where he is. But um, there are some good fights out there for him. There, there really are. Obviously, Anthony Fowler has just come up to the weight division. We saw Felix Cash. Um, some good fights out there for him. Um, but yeah, I, I'm more concerned about his power. I don't know if he has the power that I thought he has. But he's a very, very sharp fighter. Very quick. He needs to work on a thing. He needs to slow down and stop rushing his work. You know what he needs to do? Not every shot should be a power shot. Sometimes you have to kind of hold back on your power. Let's just tap to the body. Tap to the head. Tap, tap, tap. Because sometimes these fighters get used to the power. It sounds stupid, but they do. So you tap, you tap, you tap, and then you bang. Every shot he throws is with mean intentions. And I feel like fighters just get used to that power. That's that's what I think anyway. Uh, Jake Jansen, Super Chat, says, Addy the GOAT, the 2nd of April, uh, 2022. I'm doing my first white-collar boxing in Hemel Henstead. Any advice? Have some tickets. Fancy one? A Connor Nook class. Jeez, bruv. White-collar boxing, you know. I, I, <laughs> the only advice I can give, what, 2nd of April? You've not even got long. I hope you're in shape. That's the one thing I've seen about this white collar boxing, yeah, is that everyone starts off, when you go and watch them, everyone's trying to <laughs> do little Floyd, and everyone starts to get tired after about 30 seconds. The one advice I can give you is just get your ass in fucking shape. Like the best shape you could ever imagine. Do it. If not, geez. Could be a long, what is it? What is it, two... Like three two minute rounds, is that what it is? You should you should be able to survive that, no? Good luck anyway, dude, Jake. Is it for charity or just doing it just to get in the ring? Good luck anyway, dude. Uh Fight Talk TV. Hi Ade. Question. Who do you think it's harder? Lee Wood or Lara? Ooh, and follow up. How would Warrington handle Wood's power? Lara. Yeah, Lara. Lara has this very like fudding power. Like Lee Wood, like Lee Wood landed quite a lot on Conlon, you know, like landed some big shots. And it was only, I think, when Conlon started to get tired that he started to feel him. So I don't think, I don't think Lee Wood's a bigger puncher as people think he is. And when you look at his knockout record, it's not like, you know, he's not like 80 or 90%. I think it's like a 60% KO record, which is good, very good. But I don't think it's what people have been bidding or making it out to be. I think it's maybe because in his last, seven or eight fights apart from the Jazz of Dickens lost. I think he's knocked everyone out or stopped them. But prior to that, it wasn't super. So um, I don't know. I think I'd go with Lara. And I'd, can Warrington handle his power? That's a fucking great fight, you know. That's Because both of those guys have work rates like fucking Duracell bunnies. <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, Warrington can handle anyone's power right now. I know that's a bit of a cop-out answer, but the way Warrington got beat up by Lara in that first fight, and then it looked like it might have been going that way in the second as well. Let's just see. Let's see how Warrington's going to look in this fight against Kiko, um, and then we'll see. So I'm firmly putting my ass on the fence on this one. Um, a human healer. 
Um, says White gets smashed in under five rounds, and Fury's dad should fight Dean White. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think White gets beaten by Fury in five. No, I don't think so. You, you never know, but I don't think so. Um, I think I've just read that one. Um, uh, O'Neill Thomas says on the big stage, another Adam Booth fighter takes a loss. Something wrong with Adam Booth training methods? No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not agreeing with that. Um, I know people have said Josh Kelly, obviously, and Josh Kelly losing to Avenician. And um, now Michael Conlon losing as well. You've got to look at who his fighters are losing to. I mean, sometimes, and again, we said this, you can train as much. You can, you like, like I'm not going to give credit to Ben Davison for that Lee Wood win yesterday. He's going to have it on his CV, but that's Lee Wood, that is. That's Lee Wood deciding, you know what? We just got to get the job done here. You can train him as much as you want. And you can even listen to sometimes the instructions in the corner. If the fighter goes out there and does what he wants to do, what can you do? What can you do? I mean, I don't think this is a, a discredit to Adam Booth. Look, again, for nine rounds, Michael Condon looks superb. In fact, for 10 rounds, he looks superb. Scorecards, I think a lot of people had it like in, in the 12th, going into, I think some people had like like Lee Wood winning only two rounds. So he got it perfect for literally 11 and a half rounds. Perfect. And then all of a sudden, bang. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, Joe Joyce is all wrong for AJ. I think he wins. I think Joe Joyce is all right for AJ. I don't understand where this has come from. This um, AJ, like, uh, this, AJ will struggle with people that I think have fast feet and, and are movers. I think he'll struggle because AJ's, you know, he's not ploddy. He's not Joe Joyce ploddy, but, you know, he does move around the ring quite slow. Joe Joyce doesn't. Joe Joyce is going to be right there in front of his face. And I'm sorry, like I saw, I was there ringside for Carlos Takam versus Joe Joyce. I was there, I was working for TalkSport. Carlos Takam was teeing up on him. Like, honestly, it got to the point where I was like, my God, this guy. Now, as much as you guys call him the juggernaut, I'm telling you now, if AJ tees up on Joe Joyce like that, nah, mate. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. No chance. Um, I read that one already. Um, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mauricio Lara versus Lee Wood, great fight, will never happen, ever. Like, uh, unless Lara puts himself in a position where he is someone mandatory, why are you fighting him for? It, no chance. It, no no way would you fight that guy. Forget it. Avoid him like the plague. Avoid him. A few people have actually said this now about Lara. Like, I, I think Lara would beat Lee Wood. I do. I think Lara's... One of those fighters that are just ugh, horrible. Very Marcus Maidana-like. Just avoid those kind of guys if you can. Um, oh, this is interesting. Uh, Kyle Sanders says, do you think Gary uh, Gary Cully, I think this is your, your, you're talking about here, should fight Maxi Hughes next? What do you think of his performance? I like Gary Cully. I liked him. Very flashy. Very light on his feet. You know, when I knew he was light on his feet, right at the start of the fight, he started jumping up and down. And he got some fucking spring on those jumps. I was like, Gee, look at this kid. And I was like, okay, he's got something. The only problem is Vasquez looked about 70. Even walking to the ring, Vasquez looked like he was drunk. Like he had that kind of old man walk. And I was like, you're 37. I know he's been for a lot of wars, but he looked very, very old. So I don't know how much stock and how much credit to give to, to Gary Cully in that win. I want to give him a lot, but that Vasquez was awful. I like, Awful. So um, I'm not quite sure. Very big at the weight though, Gary Cully. Very rangy and long. Got a bit of pop as well. That's a bit of a problem that fight, I think, for Maxi Hughes. I think so. Um, uh, Finbar White says, Addy, what's your thoughts on Kel wanting 10 million? I think there's more to it than this. Um, I, I, think, I don't think Kel Brook has asked for 10 million pounds. And even if you do, all they can say is no. You start higher, they negotiate you down. But I think it's a bit more than that. I think it's um there was something, and I did a video about this the other day. Obviously, Amir Khan has a, a rematch clause in the contract. So I think part of the 10 million, I think, could be wrong here, was the Amir Khan step aside money and then uh, Kelbrook's purse. But um, I actually do believe, I really, really do believe that Amir, sorry, that Kelbrook will fight Conor Ben in the summer. I, like, I think that's going to happen. I think, um, Am sorry, I keep saying Amir Khan. I think, Conor Ben will get past Van Heerden. Um, Kelbrook would have rested, and I think they're going to go in the summer. And I think it's going to be a big fight 
on the zone. I hope so, so I can work on it. Um, Hassan Ahmed says, Lee Wood has saved boxer size Ben from a lot of scrutiny. Probably. Obviously, look, Josh Taylor's performance wasn't great. Lee Wood's performance wasn't looking great as well. Get, get, got caught too. Much. Like, even Josh got caught a lot. I don't know. He, he's going to have to go back and have a... It, look, I spoke to Ben after the after the fight yesterday, and I think he's going to assess himself as well. It's not just of the fight. It's not just a case of the fighters assessing their performance. Ben's going to assess his last couple of weeks as well. He's going to look at that because it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough at all. Uh, Han Azam says it was a good fight, but let's be honest, UK fighting aren't that good. When they step up, they get KO. That's interesting, really. Hmm. I think that's just boxing in general. But when you say step up, that was a world level. Step up to where? That was elite world level kind of, you know, kind of stuff there yesterday. So I don't know about that. You're talking, I mean, you, you might have to go and look at Michael Conlon's record just as an amateur, a lot more than anything. Amazing fighter, elite level fighter. And you've got to look at Lee Wood as well. I and mean, again, this is the guy that beat Zhu Can now and now beat Michael Conlon. That makes him elite level for me, especially in the featherweight division. Uh, Jay Dev says, AJ will flatten him at a spot on. I agree. Honestly, I agree. I think AJ would would knock him out. I think I'm not I like I think honestly, I think a, I think there's a bit of a disrespect here. I think AJ would knock Joe Joyce out. I think we've all got I do think we've all got a got a bit carried away with Joe Joyce beating Dubois and Takam. I think we've got a bit carried away. And I think we've got a bit carried away as well with AJ losing to Usyk. I think two things have happened here. So I think we're putting far too much stock in the wins for for Daniel Dubois, sorry, for Joe Joyce. And I think we've we've maybe given a bit of a bit too much disrespect to AJ in losing to Usyk. I, I, that's what I think. I could be wrong. Uh, Rem says, Joyce is European level at best. AJ beats him easy and could even TKO him in, TKO him between rounds 9 and 12. This is interesting. Uh, Gregor Swanson, would AJ versus Otto Volin sell out a stadium? No. I don't think it would. I've always felt that AJ could fight anyone and sell out a stadium. I'm not quite sure if that's the case anymore. Um, I don't think it would. That's interesting, that. Um, yes, it would have to be an arena. Obviously, the last time we fought in an arena was Kubat Pula, but that was because of the, the pandemic. So, yeah, it would have to go to the O2 arena, which isn't bad. It will sell out that. But, yeah, I don't think it will do a stadium. Um, Colin Wyatt Goodall says, why is everybody slamming Mickinson? I'm picking Ortiz to win, but there is no unknown element. There, But there is an unknown element, Mickinson. If you watch his recent fights, he can box. Yeah, he can box, but who is he for? He's fighting a guy here that is very good in Virgil Ortiz. So I don't think it's a case of slamming. I think it's a case of respecting what Virgil Ortiz brings to the ring. But look, we all want to see what Mickinson can do. All right, guys, another five minutes and we got to go. All right, what have we got here? This is, I did. I'm going to do a video on this, actually. Um, Adil Lambert, good, good, very good point. Have you seen the picture of Saunders? I have seen the picture of Saunders. And that picture made me think that that's it. We're not going to see Billy Joe Saunders again. I wonder if he's the type of boxer that doesn't ever officially retire, but then you just they just don't fight again. Like there's no like a big, you know, statement release. It's just that's it. And then everyone always speculates every year. Oh, are we going to see him back again? Are we going to see him back again? Kind of a bit like Prince Nassim Hamid. And then you see him getting bigger ringside and bigger and bigger. And then you're like, oh no, it's not going to happen. Then you're hoping it's going to happen. I think Billy Joe Saunders is done. I do. Um, Koshi says, was Kid Galahad initially supposed to be on the Wood Conlon card yesterday? Do you know why his fight got cancelled? He was supposed to be on it, and I have no idea why his fight got cancelled. I didn't even know who he was fighting. Obviously, I knew he was going up to Super Feather, but no idea why it got cancelled. Strange. Um, I'm guessing that means we'll probably see him on... What card could he go on? Hmm, he's not going to go on the Warrington Kiko. I think the Conor Ben card's been announced already in full. Hmm, not sure. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, Finbar White's got a non-boxing question. Do you think Chelsea would have to sell players? And which player would you like Liverpool to sign from Chelsea if they had to sell? Hmm. You know, I love I love Reese James, but I also love Trent. Now. I think Trent defensively has got a bit better. 
Kante, I love, but I love Fabinho. And I don't think there's that much between them. I think Kante's better. I actually do. I think he's, Kante's incredible, but I don't think it's, who would I take? Thiago Silva's the one, isn't he? I think Thiago, as good as Matip and Kanate are, I know Thiago Silva's 37, but I think Thiago Silva's a fantastic defender. So he's probably the one I'll take. I'll probably take Thiago Silva. I wouldn't take Mason Mount. I wouldn't take Kai Havertz or any of those. Yeah. That's a good question, actually. Imagine that, mate. Chelsea are done. Chelsea are done. The Chelsea that we have seen in the last, what, 15, 20 years no longer exists. They're finished. They are finished. Uh, Super chat from Pers uh, Pulisic's Chelsea fan. Pulisic's personal doctor. Joyce is a perfect fight for AJ. Joyce is just good enough to make AJ work. AJ will probably need a combo of strikes to take him out. Uh, perfect for confidence. I think it's a perfect fight for AJ. Don't get me wrong. I get the, the fear factor that some people have. Like, what if Joyce catches AJ? And I get all that. But trust me, they've sparred a lot of rounds. A lot. And, you know, I think I know who won those sparring sessions. I know that doesn't mean much. But, nah, man. I'm, I'm confident AJ would light him up. Um, okay, Jake Jensen saying that he's doing his um, he's white collar fight for cancer research. I can't understand how shit the build up. Um, I can't understand how shit the build up for Fury White, like Hay and Bellew conference, built the fight. Yeah. Um, it's going to get more. Remember, April 23rd is such a long way away. I'll say that. It's about, what, six weeks away now. Um, I hope there is some behind the scenes stuff. I'm sure BT Sport are doing a lot. Um, there will be a final press conference and then the weigh in. And I think once all that happens, we're going to forget all about what happened in the pre the previous six or seven weeks. It's going to be special. It's going to be special. And obviously, look, 85,000 tickets have been sold. I say that, yeah. I, I On my Instagram, I've got all these companies, one called the Hospitality Group, that somehow, you know, are doing packages for AJ, sorry, Fury versus White. So 85,000 tickets have been sold, but there are a lot of them on these real resale sites. And it's a fucking disgrace, but... What can you do? What can you do? Um, what we got here? Okay, last couple of bits. All right, let's leave. We'll leave this as the last one. We've gone over an hour. This is the last one, guys. Uh, Fight Talk TV. Is that a proper channel? I need. To, if they are, subscribe to them. Have a look at them. Fight Talk TV. Fight Talk TV. Are you a channel? Let me know. Uh, hi, Addy. Don't you think it's criminal that Sky Sports News don't mention anything about Matchroom anymore, but they mention Frank Warren's fights? You don't see them not talk about football. That's on BT or ITV. Um, <laughs> they're going to be upset, aren't they? I mean, Sky Sports and, and Matchroom were, were like that for so many years, and Eddie ditched them. You know, I mean, Eddie ditched them to go to the zone. So you're going to be upset. Come on, I would be. I'd be upset and I would, I'd probably, I'm the kind of sport bastard where I probably wouldn't mention you either. Um, and to be fair, Eddie's not, Eddie doesn't necessarily mention Sky Sports and the shows they do either, does he? So it goes both, both ways a bit. I think, um, I think it'll be all okay uh, very, very soon. I think everyone will realize the lane they're in. Sky putting on great shows. BT Sports obviously got this big one kind of with Fury and Wyatt. We've got Probellum doing the stuff in Eurosport. I'm not quite sure what's going on with Mick Hennessy anymore in Channel 5. I think that contract's gone. So look, there's so much going on um, in the boxing world. But yeah, I don't blame them for being a bit bitter because I'm that person and I know I'm like, I'd be a bit bitter as well. Guys, have a good day. Uh, we will do a recap video of everything tomorrow. But for now, peace and love. <laughs>